everyone, welcome back to the program. So today I wanna to talk about the newly announced four part Beatles movie series that's gonna be coming out in 2027. This is spearheaded by Sam Mendes, his production company, as well as Sony. And the Beatles have signed off on not only the life rights, but the music rights. This is incredible, because this is the first time that has happened. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the press release and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it and why I'm cautiously optimistic about this film. But before I do all that, I just wanna take a moment and ask you to subscribe to the channel. It really does make a difference and I appreciate it so very much. Thank you to those who already have. Today's video is brought to you by Dumb Audio. Are you looking for a simple plug and play audio system that is no frills, everything you need, nothing you don't, that looks great, plays great, and is affordable? Then check out Dumb Audio. They offer an excellent turntable, speakers, and an amplifier. You can buy it as one package or get them piecemeal, however you want to do it. And right now, you can get 10% off when you use my link in the description below. That's right, 10% off. Just follow the link below. Okay, so this sort of came out of nowhere for me. I was not anticipating a four-part movie series about the Beatles, the life and times of the band. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense because it's such a huge story to tell that I don't think one movie could properly do it and, and do justice to each of their stories. Now, this is spearheaded by Sam Mendes, who has an incredible track record. I was going through some of his credits and... I think this project is in good hands. And the other good thing about this is that it's the first time the Beatles themselves, along with the families of George and John, have agreed, have signed over the life rights, plus the music. And I think that is so key because that is one of those make or break a music biopic is, do we get the original music? You'll see that with Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, to imagine that film without Queen's music, what is it, right? I mean, we've seen that with a Jimi Hendrix biopic with Andre 3000, where they couldn't get the music rights, which kind of brings me to my cautious expectations of this film. Because we have the blessings of everyone, what are they not gonna talk about? Granted, for the most part, the Beatles aren't super scandalous. I think John perhaps has the most sort of, I think he's like, he's, he's more the black sheep of the whole group in terms of uh, his, uh, his abuse. You know, they've all been very open about their past. So it'd be interesting to see what they touch on and what they don't touch on in terms of their personal life. It makes me wonder like, how are they gonna shoot this? And I would have to imagine, or I would hope they would do something similar to like Lord of the Rings where they shoot all four of these films at the same time uh, from different perspectives. It just makes more sense. And, and I think that would be really interesting too from an audience perspective. Like there's this film called Go. Now, what I really like about that film Go is that it tells not the same story, but at a certain point it goes back to like the beginning, but then we follow a different character. And so I think, you know, especially some of these moments, uh, maybe when they're arguing and stuff, or, you know, just following different perspectives, I think would be, it's really, really cool because you don't have to necessarily pick and choose whose version you tell, you can tell everyone's. And I think that's gonna allow for some really, hopefully some really interesting creative storytelling choices. That's gonna be the, the tightrope. Like how do you tell these stories in a way that's compelling and interesting that doesn't fall into cliche, but at the same time does, does justice to, to the scope and breadth of the Beatles? I think that's gonna be a very, that's a very tall order on top of who you gonna cast. now. I do not envy these actors that are going to be portraying these men that we've known so long and have our own ideas of, you know, how they should be acted and stuff like that. And that's going to be such a difficult task to play them as real people, but not as characters. My other question is like, are these actors going to be singing with their voices or will they be lip syncing to the Beatles? And are we going to see some sort of remix tie-in? Like, I wonder, 
I wonder if we're gonna start seeing some Giles Martin mixes using the Mal software to do new stereo mixes of Please Please Me on up all the way to Rubber Soul. I wonder if we're gonna see that sort of tie-in and I wonder if we're gonna see any of that stuff be mixed into the film. Like I wonder if they're going to use the original recordings for this film when we get to the recordings of these albums. I mean, I have to think we're gonna do that because that music is so iconic. And the only other thing I can think of is like, what's going to be the villain of this story? Obviously, the villain is going to be different for every Beatle, you know, I mean, maybe Alan Klein factors in there in some respect, you know, maybe it's the fact that George isn't getting his voice heard, you know, and so in an essence, the, the Beatle entity is more his villain, like he can't breathe within the Beatles kind of a thing with Ringo what is it for him, you know, because he he walked away at a certain point, like he he ended up quitting the band at a certain point, you know, what brings him back? You know, how does he feel about the breakup, you know, and, and then with Paul and John, you know, is it just dis disillusionment with each other? Like, are they, you know, who is the villain in their story? Is it themselves? Like, I think that's going to be the most interesting aspect in telling these stories is what is the ultimate obstacle villain in their stories like that that could prove to be a little controversial we'll see we'll see how that all ends up uh, but i think the fact that they're going to be telling the perspective from each beetle will help to quell some of that and and because you know that's just human relationships you know L loving someone can be difficult. And I'm sure these four men loved each other as brothers, and yet they all got in each other's nerves at some times. And so it'll be interesting to see those aspects be played out. I guess my ultimate hope for this film series is that it does something different. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't feel like a cookie cutter biopic. Like we've seen that so many times. I hope it embraces the creativity, the ingenuity of the Beatles in a way that makes sense for the film, but also like, you know, plays into what exists. There's room to tell this story in different ways. And I think the story will be benefited by that, especially if we play into the look and feel of these albums, of the music, of the fashion, of the times. Like, I hope to see different filmmaking styles depending on the different era that were with the Beatles. You know what I mean? Like, what if it was playing with black and white and color and animation? Like, that's what I would like to see. Because I feel like as much as we revere the Beatles, and, and look up to their music, like they were just young guys having fun. And yeah, they were going through real problems, but like, you, you know, especially when you hear Yellow Submarine or Octopus's Garden or a lot of the songs on the White Album, they're also having fun. And I hope it's not overtly serious and monotone. Like I wanna see them have fun. Yes, we can have the drama, but let's play with this. Let's take it places that take some chances. Like, I really hope that they don't just play it safe the whole time. That, that is my ultimate hope. Like, I, I want to be surprised. I want to be, like, swept up in the story and just, you know, have a great time in the theater. If it's not that, it's okay. You know, I'm sure it still will be great, but if they could do that, that would be monumental and I would just be blown away. All right, everybody, that will do it for today. Let me know what you think about this movie series. Are you excited for it? Are you cautiously optimistic? Do you think Sam Mendes was the right pick to helm this? And what do you think about Peter Jackson getting left out of this? Uh, you know, I wonder what he thinks of all this. Uh, and I wonder if he'll come on to consult in any way, or he's just gonna be hands off. I don't know why I'm bringing that up, but uh, you know, food for thought. Let me know with a comment down below. Until then, thank you all so much for watching, but I especially wanna thank my members over on Patreon. I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side.